Shalom. Giving all glory, honor, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors are definitely due unto the venerable apostles of the great millstone, along with the elders who rule and teach Asherah the well through the Spirit. Salutations, peace, love, and blessings be unto the Most High Powers elect, the Biafta Wadada House of David. I'm Shamar with the Men of Alex South Kind of Camp. And um, basically, this lesson is going to be entitled Ent Eternal Life. All right. Straight into the point. Eternal life. Um, this past Saturday at camp, uh, the Akya called, you know, during his lesson, you know, he was bringing out some scriptures going into this uh, topic because you have a camp out here uh, known as the Sakari. OK, uh, led by a uh, so-called chief high priest, Al-Azhar and uh, Deacon Akka. All right. And they don't um, they don't believe in eternal life. OK, even though it's plain throughout the scriptures that the elect, all right, will inherit eternal life or everlasting life. See, what they're saying is um, after that a thousand year period, all right, in which the kingdom of heaven is going to be built up by Esau, all right, and the heathen nations, all right, that after that thousand year period, the elect, all right, are going to die. Uh, be translated going to the uh, spiritual uh, world okay and that's completely against the scriptures and utter madness at the end of the day all right and what kind of salvation is that if you have to die again you know see if if uh, this mortal has to put on immortal okay and how is immortal gonna come to an end all right. If we're going to be as the most high, Yahabashmi how are we going to die? You know, it makes no sense. So, you know, again, the New Testament and even the Old Testament is, is filled, you know, with scriptures going into, uh, you know, eternal life, everlasting life. And in the New Testament, the uh, Greek word for eternal is uh, I, uh, Ionios. All right, Salaki so Ionias, Greek word 166. All right, again, for eternal or everlasting, it means without end, <laughs> never to cease. Okay, and again, you can look that up in the blue letter. All right, without end and never to cease. Okay, everlasting, man, eternal. All right, that's what the Most High Yahweh Bashimah Shah promised to the elect, man. All right. So I'm just going to get right into it and I'm not going to make this very long because, you know, the apostles have spoken on this. The, the elders have spoken on it. But, you know, I was inspired by uh, the brother's lesson at camp on Saturday. So this is the book of Mark, chapter 10. And verse 28. And it reads, then Peter began to say unto him. Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. All right, speaking of Yahweh, I said, and Yahweh answered and said, verse 29, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. Verse 30, but he shall receive and hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come, all right, aka the kingdom of heaven, all right, it says, and in the world to come, eternal life, okay? So that's out of the uh, mouth of the Savior himself, man, out of the Messiah's mouth, out of Hamasiach's own mouth, all right, eternal life is in store, you know, first and foremost for the uh, 144,000, all right, his servants, the prophets, the men of the Lord, okay, and Lord willing, that's us, man, eternal life, you know, eternal life is what is promised in the world to come, okay, this world or this age is uh, at its end, man, all right, as it is written in 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, 
Uh, yeah, Second Ezra is the sixth chapter, right? And uh, the ninth verse for Esau is the end of the world. All right, this is the end for Esau. All right, the so-called white man, beginning with his elites, the Jewish international bankers. This is the end. All right, this is the end of their world. It says for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Jacob. All right, is you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners, and speckled birds, the children of the Lord, man, the most highest chosen people, all right? And, and again, what's coming for the elect men? Immortality, man, all right? Immortality, eternal life, everlasting life, all right? This is the book of John, St. John. And the third chapter, all right, this is where I was, I was having that meeting with Nicodemus. And it, uh, I'm going to start in the 13th, no, it's like, I'm going to start in, in uh, verse uh, 14. All right, this is verse 14, okay, get right to the point. This is St. John chapter 3 and verse 14. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's right, man. And you believe on Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, right? You receive eternal life, man. Right? And that's promised again to the elect. Alright? Eternal life. Okay? Not all Israel is going to make it out of this destruction. Alright? To join the Lord in the air in the chariots. Alright? Two-thirds of our people have to feel death by pain on this side. All right, but, you know, again, it starts with the elect men. What's the promise? Eternal life. In other words, life that doesn't end. Life that never ceases. Immortality. All right? Stand in the book of John. And this scripture came out of camp. See, John chapter 10. I'm going to start in verse 28. It reads, and I give unto them eternal life. Talking about his lambs, man. All right? It says, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man plug them out of my hand. My father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to plug them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Okay? So... He gives unto them what? Eternal life, man. Never perishing, never dying, never expiring. You know, ain't gonna be no death in the kingdom. You know, and the kingdom of heaven is is uh is built up after that a thousand year period. Ain't gonna be no death. You know what death what the scriptures talks about death being swallowed up in victory, man. Alright. Let's go to the book of Acts. This is going to be the 13th chapter. Get right to the point in the 48th verse. Acts chapter 13, and verse 48. And it reads, And when the Gentiles heard this, speaking of the Israelites who were living as uh, as Gentiles, okay? A.K.A. the Israelite foreigners. It says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed, okay? As many... It says, as many as were ordained to eternal life, believed. Eternal life, man. Okay? Eternal life. It ain't for everyone either. Okay? The gen again, the Gentiles in the book of Acts who are coming to the Lord and glorifying his word is to us the, uh, like it's the Israelite forms. Okay? The Romans Paul was writing to were the Israelites, man. All right, only Jacob, only the elect is going to inherit those uh, immortal bodies, man. Immortality. Okay. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 2. And um, I'm just 
just going to get right to the point. Romans chapter 2 and verse 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing, all right, the elect, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. All right, that's what we're, that's what we're all hoping for, man. As prisoners of hope, that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that we, all right, receive immortality, man. All right, and eternal life. All right. That's why all these brothers are out here, beginning with the elder apostle, the great most on on down. That's why all these brothers, you know, are doing this work, man. Laboring. What do you think we're laboring for? We're laboring for, for what we just read. We're laboring for glory, honor, immortality, and eternal life. All right? Patiently, man. Patiently. Romans chapter 5. And um, get right to the point. Romans chapter 5 and verse 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahweh Shah Masiach, our Lord. Eternal life, man. All right. It says in the next chapter, you know, Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Masiach, our Lord. All right. Eternal life, man. Eternal life, everlasting life, immortality, life without end, life that don't cease. First John chapter two and verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. That's a promise, man. Take it to the bank. The Lord promised his elect beginning with the 144,000, all right, eternal life, okay, simple, man, 1 John chapter 5, in verse 13, and it reads, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of the Most High Power, Yahweh, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of the Most High Power, Yahweh. All right, and that goes to you. Uh, that's a warning to you, Old Testament only Israelites. All right, those of you who, who acknowledge like Yahweh, but don't acknowledge His Son, even though the Scriptures talks about how He highly exalted His Son in the Book of Philippians, the second chapter. You know, y'all better get with the program, man, because His Son is going to get. All right, his glory when he comes back, man. Right? That's the way it's going to be. All right? But yeah, man, eternal life. All right, life or, you know, everlasting life. It's like it says in, in uh, John chapter 12, verse 25. In fact, let me just get it. Go back to John. Let's see, John... Chapter 12 and verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And we hate our life in this world, man. We understand we have no life here. We have no continuing city here. All right? You know? We ain't trying to uh, uh, stay here, man. You know? The scripture says in the mouth of Yahweh Shah himself that if this was his kingdom, his servants would fight. All right? We ain't fighting for nothing here in Babylon the Great, man. We're waiting for this place to be destroyed. We hate our lives here, man. Okay? So, yeah, man, let me read that again. John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. All right? So, if you love your life here, you're going to lose it, man. You're going to be destroyed. All right. Yeah, man. Everlasting life. Eternal life. Let's see. Let's get Galatians real quick. All right. This is the book of Galatians. Chapter 6. 
in verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. All right. Everlasting life, life, everlasting, eternal life. Okay. Yeah, man. You know, and, and again, in the Old Testament, you know, you can go to Daniel's the 12th chapter, for example. Come on, let's get that. Let's get Daniel. 12. Sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. See the the ones that don't make it on this side, they're going to be in the kingdom, and they're going to be cool in the kingdom. They're going to be good back in their right frame of mind, two thirds, all right. But they're going to have to deal with shame and everlasting contempt for refusing to hearken to the voice of the Lord. All right, which his voice is his service, the prophets. All right, so yeah, man, you're not gonna die. All right, after that, a thousand year period and go back into the spiritual world. Nah, man, go back into the spirit world, just like you. Nope, eternal life, man. Life without end, life that never ceases. Lord willing, he was edified through the spirit, and without him, I say, shall I want. <laughs>